This is why do we vote uh, the Republican cheat sheet. All right. Welcome, 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 everybody. We'll thank you, thank you uh, for for tuning in. We're um, we're sending this out uh, to you all um, in your email list. Um, email the people on the on the mailing list. Uh, make sure you subscribe uh, at freethinkersradio.com um, to be a part of more more of these. If you're catching us on social media and you want to make sure you don't miss the next one, um, if you're catching us on Facebook, Twitter, wherever, wherever you are in line, hopefully you're in line. Hopefully you're in line. Hopefully it is 7.30, 8 o'clock, you're in line, and you are ready to get your um, get your vote on and make your voice heard. Here with us today to help us with that um, is a uh, Republican strategist, John Parker. How you doing, sir? Hey, thanks, David, for having me. And uh, I'm, right. I'm in, hoping that right along with you that they're out voting because – Few people realize that the primaries are the deciding election for so many races, um, and you actually get more choices during the primaries most times than you do in the general election, which is normally just two candidates and only two candidates. You sometimes have four or five choices um, if you're voting in the primary. That's it. That's it. That's it. Some, of these, some of these races, uh, once the primary is over, there is no general. There's no one that, on the other party. That's exactly right. An example of that right here in Richland County is uh, Nathan Ballantyne's seat for state, uh, our state representative. Uh, he is the incumbent and has two people running against him in the uh, primary, but there is no Democrat that will be on the ballot, no Democrat filed. So whoever wins that race will be the state representative uh, for, uh, you know, uh, Northwest uh, Richland County. So, um, okay. yeah, wait, it's important that you get out there and have your voice heard. That's, of, of course, also, if you remember back, that's uh, President Trump uh, never received over 50 percent of the vote in the Republican primaries. But we have him today, and that was only decided by the people that went out there and voted in the Republican primary, as an example, um, right. which we had 16 people to choose from, and that's the one we landed with. So. Uh, definitely get out there and vote and have your voice heard. Um, and, you know, we have each and every one of us in this state has an opportunity uh, to choose uh, whether or not to vote in the Republican primary or the Democratic primary. Um, and I, I know you have our friend uh, Antoine Seawright going to be talking about uh, some of the Democratic races. But on the Republican side, we've got some really interesting ones. Uh, especially the statewide ones that decide, uh, you know, who our governor and our attorney general and secretary of state and all those type positions are. Um, so uh, hope that you get out there and make that choice. That's the, that's the, that's the thing. We have people um, here worried about, uh, in particular, the attorney general race um, over there, um, but also worried about the solicitor race um, here in Richland County. Um, and so with the primary situation, you can only vote in one for one of the parties. You have to, you have to choose that early, right? That's absolutely right. You can only vote in one. You have to, when, they, when you walk into the, the polling location, they will ask you, do you want the Democratic ballot or do you want the Republican ballot? And so, for example, if I say that I want the Republican ballot, then I cannot vote for uh, – uh, Dan Johnson or Byron Gibson. Uh, if I say I want the Democratic ballot, ballot, then I cannot vote for Alan Wilson, Todd Atwater, or William Herlong for attorney general. So you have to pick one or the other, and in the attorney general's race, it will likely go into a runoff. If it goes into that runoff, you will not be able to – and I voted in the Democratic primary – I have to vote in only Democratic runoffs or I have to vote in only Republican runoffs, depending on which ballot I chose. Uh, I can't switch for the runoff and vote. go, okay, well, I'll do the Democrat this time, do the Republican on the next one, since I know I have another chance. Um, and that's actually also one of the questions that's going to be on the Republican ballot this go-around, is whether or not we should be able to continue to have a choice of picking which pr uh, party we want to vote in uh, each election cycle, or if we should do, which is called an open primary, or close that primary and actually register as a Republican or as a Democrat um, 
so that you have to always vote in a Republican primary or always vote in a Democratic primary. And that's a very important vote, um, initiative uh, right there when you think about it, because at that point, if you're an independent like myself, I have to wait. Yeah, you you, you can register. Right. If you register as an independent, generally what that means is you can – I'm not. It would depend on how they structured the law, but sometimes it means that you can still pick one, or and then sometimes it means that you have to like kind of temporarily register as a Republican and then go oh, back okay. to independent and temporarily register as a Democrat and then go back, which means you have to do a lot more work um, yeah. in order to to pick and choose from uh, election cycle to election cycle. Um, so uh, one of those things to definitely uh, look into. Um, and, and again, like we said, with uh, uh, some of our city council races and county council races and state house races, uh, the only choice is uh, if you vote uh, in one primary or the other, other it's, it's all decided in the primary, just like the solicitor's race. Absolutely. So tell us about the attorney general race. Uh, with the attorney general's race, you have our incumbent attorney general, Alan Wilson, uh, he's been the our attorney general for, for eight years. Um, and full disclosure, uh, one of the first races I've ever worked on was was uh, Attorney General Wilson. So I'm a big fan. He's I think he's done a great job. Um, wow. Not working for him this cycle though. So uh, okay. you also have a guy right. named uh, Todd Atwater who is uh, uh, running. He's a state representative from Lexington. Um, and you have a guy named William Herlong. Uh, who's running in, from the upstate in Greenville. Um, a, the biggest distinguishing thing in the race is kind of an experience issue and um, some attacks that kind of have suggested the Todd Atwater and William Herlong have tried to suggest that Alan Wilson has not been tough enough on corruption uh, Alan Wilson would say, wait, 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 I have prosecuted a whole bunch of politicians over the past uh, eight years. Um, and the biggest thing that Alan would say is that these other guys, Todd Atwater and William Herlong, have never actually prosecuted a criminal, and yet they want to be the chief prosecutor of the entire state. Wow. wow. So uh, definitely a, a heated race there and uh, – you know, uh, one to watch. Um, and the governor's race is another big one, obviously. Henry McMaster is our governor, but he has never actually been elected as governor because uh, Nikki Haley was appointed, our former governor, uh, was appointed to be a U.N. ambassador. And so Henry rose through the ranks as our lieutenant governor to become governor. Uh, so that's another one. Will Henry continue to be uh Governor McMaster, or will he go uh, off into the sunset um, and have the opportunity for Catherine Templeton or John Warren or Kevin Bryant, our present lieutenant governor, or uh, Yancey McGill, uh, former lieutenant governor, uh, will one of those become the next governor of South Carolina? That will uh, quite possibly be determined in this primary since the Republicans do have an edge in the general election. Uh, for statewide elections. Um, wow. So, yeah, that, that's, uh, yeah. that's the thing we're worried about over here on the, uh, yeah, Antoine's going to talk about that, but it's uh, it's some comedy over there on the other side. I'm sure you've heard some <laughs> that. Yeah, um, I wish I could comment on that one because there's been some <laughs> funny stuff, but I'm sure Antoine will have have some fun with it. Um, I already know. Yeah. Um, now in the in the Lexington area, y'all do have um, a lot of elections there um, in the Republican race um, for people that live in the absolutely. Lexington area. Absolutely. The first thing I'd say, if you live in Lexington, uh, practically every county council seat um, is has a primary, and most of those seats, uh, whoever wins that primary, will win the general election. Um, you also do have uh, – it's worth noting that you have Congressman Wilson uh, – or it's worth noting that Congressman Wilson does not have a primary, but there is a big Democratic primary for Congress um, if you're in Lexington. Also, um, for House District 87 and House District 89, um, 
you have Republican primaries there, um, and whoever wins those Republican primaries will become the state representative for those districts. Uh, that's Mike Kaskey, and, and who's the incumbent, a uh, a veteran and Eagle Scout, um, and small business owner, uh, and Billy Oswald, who I believe this will be his eleventh time running for the seat. Um, and then you have a three-way race between Austin Bowers, um, Todd Carnes. Austin is a law student. Uh, Todd Carnes is a pastor. And Paula Raw Calhoun, who is a teacher and uh, former prosecution coordinator. Um, and that will be an exciting, uh, some exciting races. Of course, I might be a little biased on that because I'm working on both of those races. So. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I'll be I'll be looking forward to those election results come uh, tomorrow night or tonight. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so uh, some of the some of the other uh, races statewide for uh, some of our other listeners out of, outside of the Michigan Michigan area. Well, one one other big uh, statewide race that that you don't normally think about that has really heated up is the Secretary of State's race. Uh, this is a down ballot one that a lot of the time people go in and they have absolutely no clue uh, what the Secretary of State does, who the Secretary of State is, and uh, just kind of end up clicking the box of whoever's name they recognize. Um, but you have four people running in that, Carrie Wood, uh, Joshua Putnam, uh, uh, Mark Hammond, who's the incumbent, and uh, Farver. Uh, you have a Farver is a uh, Clemson football player who has been endorsed by Dabo Sweeney. Mark Hammond is, of course, the incumbent. Joshua Putnam is a representative, and Kerry Wood is a political consultant. Um, of what's interesting about that race is that it is marred with some scandal, with the present Secretary of State having being uh, a lawsuit filed against him in the office, and what has been called Sealgate. Um, he has one of the few responsibilities of the Secretary of State is to put the state seal on every law that is passed. And somehow, for a couple of years there, the Secretary of State's office didn't put that seal on the laws, and it uh, nearly invalidated a whole list of legislation, which would have caused a domino effect and major, major problems throughout the state. Thankfully, thankfully, it seems they found a fix for this, and the laws will stay in place. But uh, it, it certainly kind of showed a little bit of a dereliction of duty uh, from our in incumbent, uh, Mark Hammond. That's the incumbent. Uh, he's been in there, I believe, 16 years or something like that. So he's been in the seat 16 years, and he and this year is the year he forgot to put the stamps on everything. No, actually, he did this. I, it's kind of he's he's been back to his his stamping over the past few years. It was back in um, I think about 2004 to 2006. I don't, I I can't remember. It was a couple years several years ago and they just realized this here recently um so uh kind of kind of some crazy stuff um and so we'll we'll see what happens with that race there there's a high probability that uh he uh, there's that there'll be a runoff and that he'll get reelected uh because again as an incumbent uh he most likely has the highest name id and most of the time, down ballot. I mean, who thinks about Secretary of State? They check the box and check the name. So stay informed. Wow. <laughs> and that's why By we the do way, this. I don't have a dog in that fight. <laughs> you say you said that. You say you have no dog. In that I don't fight? have a dog in that fight. Those are the facts of the race. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's why we that's why we, that's why we keep bringing you back, Mister Parker. Number the facts, sir. <laughs> I, I try, and if I'm if I am biased, I at least let you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. And we appreciate you. So, so everyone out there, if you if 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 you've chosen to um to vote for Republican, if you don't live in those areas that are affected by the Gibson um by the Gibson primary or the Gibson uh, Johnson primary, or or you just really want to make sure that that Attorney General race goes, you know, you've had your voice uh, heard in there, then. 
uh, those year Republican options, and also uh, the initiatives. We did we go over the initiatives? I know. Um, we we of, mentioned the closed primary. There is one other question that they have on the ballot for the Republican primary. Uh, these questions, these initiatives. Uh, do not necessarily change the law, but they do voice an opinion that encourages the state legislature to take up the issue. The other question on the Republican primary ballot is whether or not we should bring the South Carolina tax code in line with um, the Trump tax cuts uh, to further simplify our tax code. Um, so you got taxes and closing the primary on the Republican primary ballot. Um, and I'll also throw out there one more thing, because it kind of has to do with uh, the Republican primary, is in this uh, Gibson-Johnson race, uh, it, I always like to point out to folks that if there may be a petition race uh, in the general election, uh, and then also if there isn't, uh, or regardless, uh, if – Dan Johnson does come actually come under indictment that Governor McMaster, or uh, the Republican, would actually appoint. So, would appoint the solicitor. Would appoint the solicitor. So that's how that that piece would work. Now that would be a limited appointment because you'd still hit the general election, uh, where where you'd have uh, well actually. It would, I I don't know how I guess what it would be four years. Yeah. yeah, excuse me. So you'd have you'd have a Republican solicitor um, for four years if if that was to happen. So. Wow, because there's no just, there's no opportunity got, to elect between you one. and me. I'm crossing my fingers on that. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna, I'm not going to mention what that may mean for some of us. I'm going to let everyone read between their own lives. That's what I'm going to do <laughs> on that. Um, <laughs> But hey, get out the vote, get out the vote. This has been your Republican cheat sheet. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Parker. Thank you. My, my Parker. pleasure, and I, I wish everybody luck and and hang in there, stay in the line. If there is a line, it probably will be low turnout. So um, it, I, I'm guessing there won't be too much of a line, and uh, and definitely get out there, have your vote voice heard, because truly, it's this primary process that your vote has the absolute biggest impact. Absolutely. Oh, and, and we want to make sure that in both of these we let it be known that uh, this election is going to lead to 2020. And 2020 is going to be some redrawing of some lines. That's true. That's Mid-terms true. Midterms matter. They Mid-terms do. Matter. They, it's, a, it's a big signal and it will have a big effect. So, all right. Absolutely. Well, all right. we thank you. We, we thank you again, man. We thank you. And we'll, uh, We'll, we'll be we'll be talking back to you as, as we get ready for the general election. Mr. Yeah, Parker, I, um, I, I'll look forward to seeing what happens and uh, recap it with you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Thank you, man. Every time. All right. Have a great night, David. Or have a great day, David. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs>